Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is HTTP and HTTPS. So HTTP is an insecure um, protocol in that the requests and responses are all in plain text and, um, and are not encrypted in any way. And that leaves any um, traffic in HTTP vulnerable to man-in-the-middle attacks. And a man-in-the-middle attack, basically, um, your browser has to send um, network packets, TCP IP packets, to the server, and the server sends back TCP IP packets to the browser. And those packets contain plain text information. So if you're sending a password out of a form, for example, to log into a website, if you use HTTP to send that information, anybody on the route from um, the user's machine where they're running the browser to the web server machine, anybody between those two points on the internet can actually read those packets in route and pull the passwords out that are in plain text. And in fact, it's pretty easy to find request payloads for hypertext transfer protocols because the HTTP request headers are pretty easy to parse and it's easy to find the body part. So you never want to send passwords over um, an unencrypted socket connection. And um, so don't use HTTP. What you should do instead is use HTTPS, which is basically same protocol as HTTP, but sent across a secure socket layer, so SSL. Now, to set it up, it's actually not very hard, but there are some requirements to do it the right way. So the big requirement to do it the right way is you have to have a static IP address and you have to prove to a certifying authority that you control the web server that is at that IP address. And the way you do that basically is um, when you sign up for a certificate, it, it will give you a specific path on your web server and a specific file that you need to put at that path. And then the certifying authority will connect your web server and fetch that file. And if it has the right content in it, you've proved that you control that um, actually domain. So for example, I have glassgirder.com registered. And so the web server on glassgirder.com, I take the file, I put it in my htdocs folder in the right place. And then that proves that I own the domain name Glass Girder because the certifying authority will do name lookup on Glass Girder, get the IP address where the web server is supposed to be running, will connect to that web server, fetch the file they gave me to put up, and that proves that I control the web server at that IP address running on that domain name. So the certificate is basically proof that I control the particular domain and that it's safe for browsers to load that site. But in order for that to work, I have to have a static IP address, which is a commercial service that most casual users don't have access to. And in fact, I pay about $100 a month for that, so it's not cheap. There are probably, I could probably save a little bit of money, but, um, but yeah, it's a pay for service. So, Doing it the right way is probably beyond the means of most of you in this class. If you want to do it professionally, at some point you'll probably have either a work IP address or your own personal IP address that that's static that you can use for web server, web server hosting. Um, but in the meantime, you can do everything but that by creating something called a self-signed certificate. Um, and a self-signed certificate will allow your browser to connect to a web server using HTTPS, using the secure socket layer, um, but, uh, but it will work with a dynamic IP address 
like most people have. So um, the way you get the certificate is to generate it using OpenSSL. And I have some links in the course shell about uh, to various places where you can get a copy of OpenSSL and about how to install it. But if you have Git installed on your machine, um, Git Bash actually comes bundled with OpenSSL. And so, for example, I'm just running Git Bash. I say open SSL um, dash H, and it gives me a bunch of commands that OpenSSL knows about. And so that's the easiest way for me personally to access it. Um, so directions for generating the keys are also in the core shell. If you go to uh, a cybersecurity lesson, um, there's one. I, I'm, I'm going to reorganize these lessons. So this is going to be like the second thing on lesson one. Um, but there's a list of resources. This um, Miguel Greenberg running your Flask application over HTTPS has exactly the command you want. So if you scroll down, you're going to see an open SSL command about halfway down, actually the first third down. This is what you want. This will generate two files called cert.pem and key.pem. And uh, what I what, and and I don't really want to have these as part of my project repository um, for the same reason as I don't want the database credentials in there. Um, now I have in my git ignore um, and ignore for top level cert.pem and key.pem so that even if I did put them there, they wouldn't get pushed to the Git repository on GitHub. Um, but it's probably even safer now that we know about the uh, app data roaming folder or the home folder. It's probably even safer to put them there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go with my Git bash. I'm going to cd tilde slash app data music videos. Actually, it's music box. I'm sorry. Music box. Oh, it's app data roaming. Okay, one more time. App data roaming music box. Okay, so there's my INF, INI file. And I'm also going to execute that git command. So copy this and then paste it in git bash. And I have an extra little garbage in there from the copy and paste. So let me get rid of that. OK, so there's the correct command. And it's going to ask me for some information that gets put in the certificate. So I need a country name, two-letter two, two code for United States is US. And then I'm in Oregon, Oregon, and then Portland. And then um, PCC, or Portland Community College. And then CIS, or Computer Information Systems. And then my common name. And it wants my email address. I mean, on the one hand, nobody's going to see it, probably, because they're not going to be able to connect to your web server running on your machine anyhow, because you don't have a static IP address. On the other hand, nobody would really care if you made up a bogus email address. So if I do ls here, um, I have two new files, cert.pem and key.pem, and those are what I'm going to use for my web server. Now, in the web server, the way you set up a um, secure connection using Verzeug, the built-in web server that comes with Flask, is in this run command here, you want to specify something called an SSL context. And uh, you give it a tuple. And the first thing is your cert file name. And the second thing is your key file name. But I didn't put them in the same folder as web UI. So I have to do a little extra work. So what I'm going to do is basically um, same thing that I did in my database class is I'm going to import OS. 
And then I'm going to say here, we're going to do path is os.environ. And so what I actually want here is if app data in os.environ, then path is os.environ, sorry, os.environ sub app data, and then else if home in os.environ, then path is os.environ sub home. And then else I'm going to raise exception couldn't find config folder. All right, so if I get here, then I have path. And so I'm just going to do path plus slash cert.pem and path plus slash cert slash key.pem. Okay. And then I'm missing a closing paren for the tuple and then a closing paren for the run command. All right. So that looks correct. Um, and then the other thing is that um, 8000 is typically used for HTTP. Um, for default, you use port 80 for HTTP and port 443 for HTTPS. So those are the default web ports for regular and secure communication. Um, so since the regular default is 80, we use 8000 for um, if 80 is already being used. Um, but you don't want to use 8000 for secure probably because it looks unsecure. So what you probably want is like 8443 because 443 is the default HTTPS port. So I'm going to go ahead and use that for my port here. And then I'm just going to rerun my server here. Um, and then uh, did not find my file here. So app data. Oh, I need the music box part. So let's go ahead and do um, app name. It seems like a bad thing that I'm defining this in two places, but um, I should I should clean that up, but not right now. So I'm for now, I'm just going to say um, I'm going to just hard code music box in here. And then same here. OK, so it worked. Now here's where it's running the server. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that link. Now um, I get a warning in Chrome, even though it's signed, self-signed. Um, and if you go to advanced, um, you will either get a link to proceed to it unsafe, or it will just reject it outright, depending on some flags that you can set. So for me, since I see this, I can click on it, and it goes ahead and shows me the content. It warns me it's not secure. If I click on this, you can see certificate not valid. You can actually see that this it's using my self-signed certificate, the one that I just created. So it has the self-signed certificate, and uh, that lets me establish the connection, but it knows it's self-signed, and so that's still considered a risk. Um, now, if this fails completely, it's likely because of a flag. So you can go to Chrome colon slash slash flags and then look for localhost. And then you'll see something called allow invalid certificates for resources loaded from localhost, which I have enabled. 
So let me show you what it looks like if it's disabled. If I disable that and then relaunch, and then I'm going to try going to um, 8443. Actually, it already accepted the key from before, so it works. But uh, yeah, if I if I exited this and flushed my cache and retried it, it would probably block access unless I enabled this again. So once again, you go to Chrome Flags, you look for localhost, you find the one for allow invalid certificates for resources for loaded from localhost, change it to enabled, and then relaunch your browser. And then when you try to access it, it should give you the proceed to unsafe site link um, after giving you a warning about it. So that's all you really need to do for this course.